Kenyan LGBTQ plus activist body is found stuffed in a box and what Reverend Dr. Darrell Watkins says in a Sunday service is important. LGBTQ plus advocate uh, and activist Edwin Chilaba's body was found stuffed in a metal box on the road in uh, the country of Kenya. The LGBTQIA plus community continues to be uh, incarcerated in Kenya under the British era laws criminalizing homosexuality and penalizing gay sex with 14 years of jail time. The Kenyan police are investigating the death of the LGBTQ plus activist. The deceased was taken to Moy Teaching and Referral Hospital for experts to establish the cause of his death. The Kenyan Human Rights Commission on Friday called Edwin a victim of, quote, another dis disgusting act of homophobic violence, end quote. This week, the senior pastor of Sunshine Cathedral, the world's largest queer church, had some interesting thoughts and talked about the meaning of the American LGBTQ plus community's reaction on this hideous crime in Africa. On Friday, in Kenya, it was reported that LGBTQ activist Edwin Chiloba was found dead on the side of the road, stuffed in a metal box. Chiloba was a model and he operated a fashion business and he was a campaigner for LGBTQ rights. He was brutally killed by unknown assailants. A fellow Kenyan gay rights activist called Chiloba a fighter committed to changing the hearts and minds of society toward LGBT people. Kenya has recently banned certain films for having gay content, gay character, gay storyline, just the existence of, of gayness, films banned. Violence against LGBTQ Kenyans has been on the rise in recent years, not just in Kenya, but certainly including Kenya. Under a British colonial era law still on the books, Homosexual activity in Kenya is punishable by up to 14 years in prison. The law is rarely enforced, but harsh and anti-queer discrimination remains. If who you are and how you love is on the books as criminal, why should anyone treat you with any dignity or respect? And that is how it works. Kenya seems a world away. And we who aren't even part of that country or culture may feel powerless to help. And I urge us to resist that feeling of helplessness. When I was a young minister, I remember seeing a bird's nest on the church lawn. And as I approached the nest to investigate, I noticed some eggs in the nest. And then I noticed just a few feet away, a scrawny little mother bird, chest out, cursing me out, and threatening me mightily in her little bird voice. Now, I don't doubt if she had pecked or scratched me, that it would have been unpleasant. But her chances of saving her eggs from me if I turned out to be truly villainous were slim indeed. Still, instinctively, she did whatever she could. She's this big. She, she wasn't big enough to eat. I would have thrown that back as a tapas. It was just tiny, tiny little thing. And yet she stood up to quite sizable me. She did what she could, as ridiculous as it seemed. Was she equal to the perceived threat? Maybe not. And still, she raised her little bird voice and took a stand in defense of her helpless eggs. We might feel small and powerless, like a little bird. Chirp and squawk anyway. <laughs> Decency demands it. Injustice may occur over our protest but may it never happen under our silence. My clarion call today is for us to lift our voices, however squeaky and ridiculous our protest may seem. Share credible news articles on social media to make people aware of anti-queer violence. Sign petitions to protect queer people all over the world and don't listen to those who say it won't work. It might not. Squawk and flap anyway and continue your support of Sunshine Cathedral. As we thrive, we serve as a light to queer people and their allies all over the world. 
Our existence is a message to every LGBTQ child of God. You are God's miracle and not God's mistake. Let us be the voice of the voiceless. And may God's blessing be upon the LGBTQ people of Kenya. Amen.